All right, for this lesson, we're going to basically go over some uh, brief steps in creating a resume. Start by opening up a Word document, of course. Then we need to open templates. Templates can be found in this version of Office. It's different in, in other versions, but you can say File, New. And when you do, it's going to give you this little menu bar over here. And over there, you'll see uh, general templates. If you already opened some, you'll see the, the actual templates that you've recently opened as well. <clears throat> Under general templates, there are all kinds of different templates, um, from a blank document, which would just be what we had on the screen before, to a web page, um, letters and faxes, mail merge wizards, memos, reports, all kinds of different things. We're going to go to the general tab, um, and then, excuse me, other documents tab, and we're going to pick the professional resume. Each of these resumes has a little bit of a different look to it. The professional resume is a chronological resume, meaning that it's based not only on objective and experience, but the experience is dated. Um, so you're going to put your um, newest experience first or your current experience first on down to your um, older experience down here at the bottom. Um, it differs a little bit from a skills resume in the sense that instead of highlighting your skills, it's really highlighting your past positions with jobs. Depends on which type of job you're going for. It depends on how much experience you have as to which type of resume you're going to want to use. But um, this is the one that we have the template for today, so we're going to just work with it. Now let me just go over. This is pretty self-explanatory in my opinion. You're going to actually just be clicking and typing in information as you go about uh, uh, the different information. All of these little um, sections here are actually input boxes that are ready for you to actually input information. You just simply type over it. So if I want to type an address, I can type in um, type in an address right there. I can one single click, highlight it. I can type in a phone number and so on. So for the name, I will need to highlight the whole name. And for your objective, this is where it gets, uh, <clears throat> this is where your report writing skills are going to come into hand because your objective needs to state the job that you're applying for inside of a sentence that also kind of um, tells me um, a little bit about you but what you're really after. So, uh, for instance, um, if I was applying for a job as a baker, it might say, my objective is to obtain a quality employment position as a baker with such and such company. I like to add the company's name in this objective section because it kind of personalizes the um, resume to the business, and I, I just sort of think that comes off good. It's going to depend on what you uh, feel your personal preference is. Um, you know, you could say that it's with a growth company, or you want to, you want to start off as somewhere and you hope to eventually grow uh, with the company in the future, or um, those are all types of objective statements that you can make. Under experience, you're going to put your uh, current date in there. If if it's from, say, on this example, 1990 to current, you would simply just write current and replace that uh, date, and then that will tell me that you've been working there for 10 years or however long it's been, 20 years. Uh, you would put the name of the company. You would put what your position was, and it's bolded in this example. Um, the name of the or the title of the position should be the position you held because in case they call they need to know and say you know were they a national sales manager it has to it has to match up and in this part right here you're making just some basic simple statements as to the skills that you brought to that job or the accomplishments that you um, you know accomplished while you were there so for instance in this example they increase sales from 50 million to 100 million. That would be the kind of same same thing. If I was trying to get a job as a baker and I had already worked as a baker, I would put uh, I was able to uh, come up with new recipes or I was able to increase productivity or I was able to decrease baking time, whatever the case may be. I'm not a baker, so I don't know a lot about it, but that would be what you would say. <clears throat> um, all right, education is very important, and this is really where you need to put any education you have. So if you're high school educated, you need to put high school. If you're still in high school, you need to put the most current grade level that you've done. If you've gone to college, you need to put each college experience in there. Um, every little ounce of experience might jive, and you never know what the interviewer is going to be looking for as far as education. They might 
uh, discover that, oh, hey, I went to that school too, or, oh, this is, uh, you know, a, a, an area where we're looking for an expert in, and it looks like your community college background was in that. So it's, you really want to put all of it. I would even put uh, certificates and things like that that you've maybe received for special training. So not just education that was formal in a school, but you might put also education that came from uh, in the form of a certificate or special training. Uh, interests. This is a good place uh, to really kind of set yourself apart. Under interests, you're going to really be telling me what types of things interest you personally. So this is going to be more about you, the person. So you would tell me that you uh, like working with computers, you enjoy skiing on the weekends, you enjoy, you can tell me a lot of different things um, in your interest section. You want to keep it appropriate though. Um, you never want to say something in an interest thing that might offend somebody else because you never know who's going to be reading this. So it needs to be very vague. It needs to be something that is, is sounds interesting but maybe doesn't have um, maybe it's not controversial or that type of thing. So in this case, it was gardening, carpentry, computers. Those are all good things. Um, I've made this section as big as a paragraph before, and I've uh, never had a problem because people do like to read that. For instance, if you've worked with um, in another field where you worked with a, a group or an artist or something like that, you might want to put their name in there, put what you've done, you know, kind of throw some things around in there. This right here section you just delete all the time or you could take in you can um, add in say activities and awards um, interest is kind of activities but you could add an award section for any awards that you had um, you're really typing anything you want into this section and they just made it open for you basically in Word. so most of the time you're gonna delete it sometimes you could type in you know say award right there and then you could type in your awards and that would be that. Most of the time though, you just, you're just you just gonna delete the cells and when it does, it's gonna say, would you like to shift cells up? And that's because you're deleting a table. Basically, a table has been inserted into this Word document. So when you delete sections of this document, this, this template, it's going to shift cells up and down accordingly. So if I say shift cells up, or shift cells up, it'll do just that and it looks just like it should have and it's very nice. So there you've got it. Um, pretty easy to do. I don't think anybody will have too much of a problem. If you do have a problem, you can always come back to mrcross.org for some more fantastic tutorials.